Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Thursday. I almost said Tuesday, but uh, it's Thursday, and I'm back, and we're just going to do some more animation today. I hope you guys aren't getting bored with this, but this is something I definitely have to get done. So I figured, hey, I'll just take you guys through the entire process. So I'm going to be doing some more animation. If you're just tuning in, I'll explain the whole thing. If you've been watching over the last couple of streams, then you'll have seen this vulture animation kind of evolve how I've been doing it. And uh, so, you know, what I've done, you know, I came up with this dialogue that I recorded and brought into TV Paint, which is the software that I'm using. And oh, also, you might see the new background that I've got, which is kind of cool. And also, we fixed the green screen issues. That we fixed having. the green screen yeah. issues. Yeah, we've got all that fixed. Uh, but um, yeah, so we got some fun. I, I think, where's the, is, where is he? He's, is it right here? It, his face is to your, to your left. Oh, there it is, yes. I was looking at the wrong screen. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so it's fun. So maybe we'll do a different background each time. But uh, so we got that going. And uh, as usual, I've got Dustin. My son Dustin is with me today, and he's going to be fielding questions. And as usual, we've got my business partner, Nick Birch, and he's in Sarasota on the other side of the state of Florida in the beautiful Gulf Coast. And he's going to be answering questions as well on the typewriter. And a, a typewriter on the keyboard, I guess. Typewriter. Shows my age, right? <laughs> uh, but anyway, back to what I'm doing here. So let's go back to the let's go to the desktop. So this is TV Paint software, and uh, just to get you guys caught up, uh, this is the software that I use to do my traditional animation digitally. So I can sit and draw right on my screen. Why don't you jump to the over this camera up here, Dustin, so they can see the setup? Mm -hmm. This is my setup right here. Uh, this is a Wacom Cintiq 27-inch QHD, or HQ, QHD, I think. QHD. Yes. Um, it's awesome. I can sit, draw right on the screen, uh, and animate, and it's great. So um, if I'm not animating on paper, I'm animating on this. And so that's what I'm doing here. So let's go back to the screen. And um, and so what I've done is I'm... I'm creating a new course for uh, for my website, creatureartteacher.com. <laughs> that was a little signal to Dustin. <laughs> creatureartteacher.com. I'm creating a new uh, uh, course there on acting for animation, specifically acting. What do I think about when uh, I have a scene that requires acting uh, for characters? What do I think about? How do I phrase it? How do I construct it? How do I get my characters to emote in the way that I want them to emote? Uh, and so that's what the course is going to be about. And so th I'm doing a series of shots that have characters acting. This is one of them. And then down the road, I will deconstruct all those shots uh, for the course. And you guys will have that. You'll have access to all of the... Um, if you get the course, you'll have access to all of the dialogue that I've done, all of the, the, the TV paint files. You'll have access to everything. So it'll be kind of cool. And so anyway, I've done some dialogue for this shot. And it's a line that I pulled from To Kill a Mockingbird. And the line is, uh, you can't really understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, you've really got to get inside their skin and walk around in it a little bit. And so I really like that dialogue. I came up with a character, a voice in my head. I recorded it, brought it into TV Paint, and I've got it here. And I just thought, you know what, it might be kind of fun to have a couple of vultures having a conversation. And this guy kind of literally acts out what he's saying. So I'll show you what I've got. Uh, but just to review, for those of you that are new, what I started out as was a little scribble test. And I'm going to turn the sound off so it's not distracting. But this is the scribble test. I always go through and just quickly scribble it all out very quickly. And then what I do is I'll go through and create a new layer on top and I will redraw all those scribbles and get nice clean animation like you see right here. And that's where I'm at. I've, cons I've gone through and I've gotten all of my keys. These are all my keys. I've gotten them all drawn out. So you can see right here and here he is walking around in it a little bit. So let me turn the sound back on and I'll actually play the scene for you. Or the shot. I'll turn it up a little bit. You know, you know I really can't understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. I'll let it play one more time. You know, 
you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. So I had a lot of fun doing this. I know it's kind of morbid, but I just thought it would be funny. And uh, the guy on the left, who's just a held cell right now, he's just standing there staring straight ahead. He will have some animation. He's not going to have a lot of animation, but he will, he'll, he'll have a little bit of animation. But I haven't gotten to him yet. And so now what I'm doing, the next step, and that's what I'm going to be doing with you guys today, is I'm putting in all my in-between drawings. I'm going to put in all the mouth shapes that need to go in and all the extra drawings that are going to make it nice and smooth. I'm going to have a combination of ones and twos throughout the shot. And what that means is some places I'll have a drawing that will be held for two frames. And in some places I'll have a drawing that's held for one frame. And it's just really, you know, I decide where to put those according to how much he's moving. Okay, so I'll be talking about that a little bit too probably. Um, and with that, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And do we have any questions coming up yet? Uh, not quite yet. And so, yeah, so if you guys have any questions that you want answered and we can talk about the nature of reality. We can talk about my early years. We can talk about dogs. We can talk about whatever, right? Yeah. We can talk about Dustin. But, uh, somebody... Dustin's crazy hair. His awesomely beautiful hair. Look at that hair. Oh, my gosh. So nice. <laughs> I got really creepy really fast. <laughs> just a little creepy. Uh, but uh, somebody just hopped in and said, uh, didn't, didn't we work... Didn't you work on this last week? <laughs> yes, I did work on this last but week. I just, hear the whole, like, I'm sorry if you just came in, but I just spent 10 minutes talking about <laughs> what I've been doing the last couple of weeks. But yes, uh, it's just not done yet. So I'm continuing to work on it. This is a big shot. And so shots like these usually take me about two weeks to get them done. Lots of drawings. Uh, this will end up having about 200 drawings in it. And uh, so it just takes time. But um, so now what I'm doing is I want him to be popping up in the frame. So he's going to come up a little slow, it's slow at first and then go fast. <laughs> and then he slows into this <laughs> pose up here. <laughs> so what I want to, to, to want to do is I'm going to start animate or uh, in betweening uh, from forward to back because I want the drawings to be closer to where he's starting and then speed up as he goes uh, as he goes up. So this first in between will be right here. Are you going to paint the um, the scene after you're done animating it? Uh, probably not. I'll probably just keep it in pencil test, because um, what I'm really focusing on is just the the acting for the animation. So I'm not going to really worry about color at this point. So I'm just going to come in and get really broad with it. And you'll notice I don't really labor, especially when the drawings are this far apart. You're not going to see me really labor the drawings a lot. Uh, Kristen uh, Von Benson uh, on Facebook asked, question, did Aaron have any thoughts on the design sheet I sent earlier? On, on the designs? Sorry, guys. Uh, I got to I uh, gotta do something here. I forgot to pull up Nick. Nick, I forgot to pull you up. The heck? <laughs> Hold on, I gotta pull him up. Deep thoughts of Nick Birch, so I can see Nick's questions. When uh, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. We already got one. Aaron has drunk glasses. I do have drunk glasses. I actually <laughs> that's funny. I stepped on my glasses. I stepped on them, and um, so I can't <laughs> I can't get them straight. But I do have drunk glasses. Um, I did not. Uh, I did not see them. Uh, I'm sorry, but I did not see them. The, the drawings. But I do have a YouTube question. In traditional animation, once the pictures are taken with the camera, how is it we see and hear on screen? Uh, it's all put onto film, or at least back in the old days, we put it on film. And uh, uh, so that's that's how they get there. It's all put on film, and then we just play it right back. So I hope that answers your question. When you sketch out a drawing like a character, does it matter what your sketch looks like before coloring it? Uh, yeah, because that's gonna that's gonna dictate what you color and how you color it. So yes, definitely it matters how it looks. Now when I'm doing this, this is still even though I'm tying these down, this is still rough animation. 
this is still would still be considered rough animation I'm just really tying it down nice and clean and while doing the first sketches uh, how do you decide which are uh, the right poses like the keyframes that just comes from it comes from experience uh, and I'm not sure if you can hear what Dustin's saying I hope you can hear him Hello? yeah but the question is uh, how do I know how much to move them was it or how to pose them yeah, how, how to pose them? How do you well, what, where to pose them? One of the things that I do is I spend a lot of time doing what's called thumbnails. And what thumbnails are, for those of you who don't know, is I just sit down and I'll listen to that dialogue over and over and over again. And I'll picture the animation, the acting happening in my head. And I'll do little sketches to, to find the poses and get them right. The thumbnails are called little thumbnails. I'll do little sketches uh, just to get it all out and on, on the paper. It's basically planning out, creating my roadmap for the animation that I'm going to do later. So I'll use those sketches as reference when I do the final animation. And that's how I do it. And what that does is it really saves a lot of time because if I'm exploring throughout my animation, I'll end up do, you know throwing out a lot of work for no reason. So I'm going to do another drawing here. And you'll notice that what's going to happen is I'm going to get closer and closer to this starting drawing. Are you using a green screen to, ha to have your video on top like this without the rectangle around you? Yes. I want you guys to be able to see as much as of the, you know, the desktop around me as possible. So I want you to be able to see that. It also gives you a more immersed feeling like you're more in the TV instead of... Yeah. Just... It on it. Yeah. 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 Is, is 2D animation at Disney dead? Uh, yeah. Pretty much right now it is. Um, the last I heard, there weren't any 2D animators working in, within the company. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's a pretty interesting... I wouldn't call it sad. I mean, it's just, you know, life moves on, things change. Uh, does it... Do I feel personally sad about it? You know, it's, I, of course I do, a little bit. But, um, you know, we have to embrace change and move forward. And I think, uh, you know, it might be not mainstream anymore, like it was back in the, you know, 90s and all that. But I do think that it's going to make a comeback. I do think somewhere down the road, you know, we're going to have opportunities to, to do more. And uh, uh, I think I'm hoping that, you know, I'll be a part of that. I'm, I'm trying hard to to get, you know, e even just through the little bits that I'm doing, just getting it back into people's eye light, eyesight, you know. Somebody asked, will I be cast as Maui in Disney's live action Moana? What's that? Oh, <laughs> Dustin? Yeah, because your beautiful, crazy hair. Yeah, because of all, yes, all of this. Yes, you do look like Maui. You also look like Sasquatch. All I need is like, I don't know, 100 more pounds of muscle and, <laughs> and a bit more tan. A couple of uh, tattoos now strip look like Maui. If you guys have ever seen, this is, shows my age. So, so the ones that are my age that are watching, which is there aren't too too many, you got to watch the Bigfoot episode of the $6 million man. And Dustin is the Bigfoot. He looks exactly like him. Uh look less like I'm with with uh, with my short beard like when I had my long beard yeah <laughs> but I shortened it because of that I was just like eh. <laughs> <laughs> do you watch DuckTales uh DuckTales I do not watch DuckTales uh and, and the uh Eric Goldberg and Alex Cooperschmidt are they still at Disney they are still at Disney and um, so is Mark Henn. So uh, I take that back as far as saying that there's no traditional animators there. But they're doing, they're not doing things in the same capacity as they did back in the, you know, back in the days when we were uh, making our films. It's a completely different thing now. Uh, uh, a lot of people are asking about the other vulture. Okay, so the other vulture here, right now he's the secondary character in this shot. So what that means is, I'm going to just put him off to the side. He's just there to listen. He's listening to his buddy talk. So there will be animation. He will be animated, but right now he's just a held cell. Once I finish this animation for this guy right here, then, then, uh, yeah, yeah. 
right here. There, I'm going to turn off that sound. Um, then I'll go over and just add a little bit of movement to the guy on the left. He might he might come down and come up with a little bit of food, maybe chew, maybe blink. But that's really all he's going to do. He's going to get a little bit of food splattered on his face. I'll let this play without the sound. And you'll see when, uh, when the vulture on the right is talking, when the food slings around, right there, some of it's going to land on the other vulture. So that will be kind of fun. So here, uh, I'm going to jump back to the timeline. Uh, and yes, I, the answer, I, I, the, there was a question as to whether I'm going to animate the other vulture. And yes, I am. So here you can see I've got drawings that are held for twos. And you can see the movement right there. But then all of a sudden you see two drawings right here that are held for three frames. I don't do threes. So what I'm going to do is put these two drawings on ones. And also you can see there's a big movement between here, between this drawing and that drawing. Really big movement. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this right there. So we've got four and I'm going to put an in between and then I'm going to add other drawings in between there. So we'll put it on ones and I'll show you what I mean. Whoops. Hold on. I'm going to change that again. I'm going to go right here and go like this and put a drawing right there. So here you can see there's a huge movement between the green and the, and the magenta. And so I want to fill that in with some extra drawings. Ready for another question? I am. Uh, how many writers did you work with on Brother Bear? And could you talk a bit about the story development of it? I worked, uh, we worked with about five different writers over the course of the film. And uh, um, the process is really, it's all about working it and reworking it and working it and reworking it in order to make it better. And uh, I don't want those feathers to flop up yet. That's why I went back and redrew them. Um, you know, you're, we'll write the film and then we'll storyboard it and then we'll cut those storyboards together and add sound and temporary dialogue and we'll watch it in the movie, in the theater. And a lot of times, especially in the first pass, the movie is terrible. It just, it's just terrible. A lot of things that you thought were going to work in script, um, when you get them up on the screen, they just don't work. And, you know, you just, you just got to keep working it. So we'll go back and we'll rewrite and, um, and re-storyboard and do it again. And hopefully the idea is that it gets better. And we do this process over and over and over. And this, this is how the films are still made today. And it's, a, it's an expensive, time-consuming process, but that process creates really good films. It makes the story, that, you know, in, in animation, we have the ability to basically do a dress rehearsal of the movie before it goes out. And that is through our storyboarding. We storyboard the whole movie, and so we get to see it, even though, even though it's just in storyboard form, we get to see it before it's actually made. And, uh, and that's how we gauge, you know, what's working and what's not. And uh, it makes for a much, in my mind, a much better way of making films. If you look at, you know, animated movies, there's probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 animated films that are released a year, maybe 17. And of those animated movies, most of them are pretty good. To uh, and a few of them are usually rated the top, mo no, top in the top 10 movies of the year, you know, a good number of them. Um, and if you look at all the live action films, which don't normally storyboard all of their, you know, all of the material. Um, if you look at that, most live action films, and there's lots of them that go out, most of them are bad. Um, and it's only a few of them that we see that actually make it to mainstream that are, that are really good. And uh, I'm a big believer that it's the process. It's this process that we go through and storyboarding that makes it that makes the the animated films you know better. So there you go. It's a long-winded answer, but why do you have so many skulls in your office? And uh, do you have a lion skull? In your office? I like to have a lovely room of death. <laughs> it's a wonderful room. It's a lovely room of death. No, I have I have skulls everywhere because I teach animal anatomy and and uh, drawing, and so these are all you know reference. You jump to the other camera. So over here, and there's there's skulls that you can't even see that are off camera. I've got a couple of bear skulls. That's a lion skull, bobcat, 
That's yeah, a leopard. Actually asking about the lion skull. Yeah, that's a lion right there, and then a little bobcat next to it, and then there's a leopard. Up top is a wolf, coyote, fox. I've got a grizzly bear, a polar bear over there. I've got an alligator, a giraffe. Yeah, I've got skulls everywhere, but it's all they're all reference. It's all reference material. Got a skull of a cow. Cow. <laughs> I got a cow. Cow killer. <laughs> There, you can see them pop up. But you see it pops up really fast. If I just highlight this section, it, it kind of strobes through there. And when, I, when it goes on the twos, that's why I want to put it on the ones. Right through there. So there's the first one. Right between those two. So I'm going to go boop, boop. And I'm going to put a drawing there. And I'll just be on for one frame. These will go on to what for one frame. Any more questions? Uh, yes. Oh, good. Good, considering that's why we're here. Actually, mind if I uh, answer a question? Sure. Because uh, someone is asking uh, if I have a YouTube channel. Oh. And, uh, mind if I, mind if I go have... for it. Go for it. Um, yes, I do have a YouTube channel. Be sure to go over there and check it out. It is uh, Dustin Blaze. It's just basically my full name. Um, and I've been doing a lot of uh, drone cinematography. Like I've been doing all the... I've been using my uh, editing skills I've learned from, from Dad and uh, been putting that into drone footage that I've been making out in the field with my Mavic Pro. So be sure to check that out. Again, it's Dustin Blaze on YouTube. There you go. And for your question, have you ever wanted to work on the game arts in the game industry? I, you know, I, it, I've never had a burning desire. I'm not a gamer, uh, and I've just never. Uh, it's just something I've never had a burning desire to do. Um, I really I love the cinematics that I see come out of on some of these games. I think they're really amazing. But no, it's just not something I've I've aspired to. Unrelated, but do you Blaze boys like the movie Old oh Brother Art Thou? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my favorite movie of all time. It is literally my favorite movie of all time. Second favor is The Big Lebowski. Hey, any boy, Smithies. <laughs> <laughs> Who is cast to animate background characters and minor characters that only dial that only dialogue in the entire movie? Um, uh, usually, the, it's junior animators that will do those types of roles it's a, it's there those are roles that you know the young up and comers that are w trying to get their feet wet trying to get work on production that's how i started you know and, and the rescuers down under which is my first feature film i did a lot of the little prison animals in the background one of the first shots i ever animated was you know in the mouse society you know there was 103 mice that had to be clapping and i had to animate 103 mice clapping uh, Clara on YouTube asks, what's my favorite scene from Brother Bear? Probably the transformation sequence. That, to me, uh, I really, I, just everything that we put into it uh, really was, I don't know, it was really, really cool. And uh, I enjoyed doing that. So probably the transformation. And it's because of the music, the writing, the, the visuals, all of that. Yeah, that's my, that's my personal favorite as well. And the, it was really funny is after working in 3D depth, all I could think about was how cool would it be if it, if a, uh, oh yeah, a few movies that got turned into 3D, yeah, or something like Tron where it starts flat, but then once it gets the transformation scene, like when he pokes that hole, yeah, all of a sudden it just bursts into 3D. That's pretty world. cool. That's a cool idea. I like it. And ever since I had that idea, every time I watch it, it's like, wow, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But uh, do you have any books that, you, uh, that you've published? I have no books that I've published. Uh, we're working on an art of book currently. Just you know, We just are trying to find the time to get it all done. But uh, we're getting closer. Well, hopefully in the next year or two, we'll have a book out. What would you say is in... Is a decent budget uh, for an animated short film. For a short film? Yes. Uh. Well, I. A few hundred uh, bucks. Well, it's hard to say because it really. Yeah. Um, that's really hard to say because it, it depends on if it's. It really depends on character. It depends on. I don't know. I mean, there, it's. 
Like, depends on the length, how many people are going to be part of it. Yeah, I mean, how many characters are in it, how complex is it. There's a lot of different things to consider. Well, I'm really messing this up. There's a lot of different things to consider on something like that. I'm just going to fake this. Just I'm going to shorten that neck. And then it's going to pop right into here. There we go. I'm going to do this. There we go. So, yeah, that's a hard one to answer. Um, only because it's it depends on the studio doing it. If you know, Or if you're trying to do it yourself. You know, we're, we're doing our own short film. And... It's going to cost us in the tens of thousands of dollars to to make it, which is super cheap compared to a, a big studio. You know, a big studio might spend several million to do. You know, I know, you know, Pixar's animated shorts are, you know, there's several million dollars to make those. So it really depends on, you know, what you're trying to do and what studio is doing it. And if you're doing it yourself and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. What do you think about the movie Treasure Planet and the way it was animated? I love Treasure Planet. I know it gets a bad rap, but I, I really like Treasure Planet. So, you know, uh, and I really like Ron and John, you know, the directors. I've I've worked with them on several movies, and and I just think they're great guys. They're they're great storytellers, and, um, yeah, I, I love that movie. I know Dustin loves it. Oh, yeah, and my favorite character is, uh, uh, is Silver. Yeah. And not only because he has the greatest motivational lines, but the fact that they not only 2D animated him, but his cyborg arm is completely CG animated. Like they hide, they did like a hybrid animation with him. Yeah, that's Glenn Keane. And, and to think like that kind of, com they could create that complexity into a movie like that is yeah. crazy. Glenn Keane animated him. Uh, for someone wanting to animate an independent hour cartoon, what size computer would you recommend? What size computer? Oh, shoot. Sorry. Hold on one second. An independent, what size computer? I don't, I mean, you could, you could animate something. Your computer can be your laptop as long as the laptop is strong enough. Um, uh, the issue is not necessarily, uh, you just need something strong enough to drive it. And then, and then you, for as animation goes, you need, you know, you can still animate on paper if you want and then have everything scanned. So there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Um, I, I use a Mac pro, which is a higher end Mac, uh, because of the needs that we have through video and that sort of thing. But you don't need to be, you don't need to go that crazy with it. So there's a lot of, you have a lot of options. I mean, like I said, you know, a Mac laptop nowadays is strong enough to, to drive TV paint like this, and you can you can make a whole short on it all the way through color. So, yeah. 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 What am I doing here? I'm doing... <laughs> trying to get... Jimmy Nicholson said, <laughs> Do I score any points? I took my cart back. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes, you score points. <laughs> I'm going to have to reply to that with one point for Jimmy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Hall says, Hi, I put my cart back too, but in the UK we call it we call them trolleys. 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 Yes. There we go. And it's going to come up and go right into here. Uh, how is uh, Snow Bear doing? Snow Bear is doing well, thank you. Um, it's just uh, on a little bit of a hiatus while I get... Whoops. While I get this done, uh, and while we get some other courses done, it's on a little bit of a hiatus, but we are actively pursuing getting it uh, fully storyboarded. And then once we get it storyboarded, hopefully in the next couple of months, getting that completely done, and it's just taking a long time because of all of our other commitments and everything, uh, then I will be focusing on animating that for probably the next... For about a year, because it's going to take about a year to animate all of it. And uh, it looks like Nick has uh, something oh. to say. Uh, if, if we get an iMac Pro soon, we might do a Tilt Brush VR live stream. Oh yeah, that's true. Which would also be very, very cool. 
Man, I would love doing that. Let's do it, Nick. Uh, if I had an animated short film that I wanted to monetize in some way, what would you suggest? A film festival, distribution, like what, what would you suggest? Yeah, I, I would try to get into the festivals as, as, you know, as your first thing. <clears throat> and then just see where it goes. You know, people once people start seeing it, it's going to get a life of its own. You know, YouTube is a huge way of getting it out there, and and you know that's what we're going to do too. But before we put it on YouTube, we do want to get it into some festivals, premiere it somewhere. Um, I'd like, I'd personally, I'd love to show it at you know any number of festivals here in the states. I'd love to be able to do Snow Bear at Annecy, maybe. Um, so there's there's different options down the road if you were to if you were to do that. Uh, TV paint animation is completely new for me, but uh, does it work as Photoshop? I mean, layers, brushes, effects, and are you going to release, or did you already release a tutorial lesson about how to use it? Yes. If you go on my on my YouTube channel, there's I have like four four full videos of me showing you how to use TV paint, and TV paint is animation software. It's not. Photoshop is like painting and photo retouching. So, I mean, yes, you can do layers, but it's more in relation to how you would layer an animated shot. So it's it, think of it more towards animation, although some of the brushes are Photoshop-like. Um, it's more it's just it's animation software, which is completely different than um, Photoshop. Uh, do you have a Patreon? I don't, but we are currently talking about doing one. Nick and I. I've, I've been constantly hearing about Patreon myself, but I've never really quite understood exactly what. It Patreon is. basically is a way to get uh, you do work, and and people will sponsor you. They can donate a certain amount of funds towards your whatever you're doing, and in return, you hand out, you give them something in return. Uh, Maybe it's once a week or once a month or something like that. And like little gifts or like. Yeah, or they like they get something. They get something for their money, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, what type of digital pen do you use for your animations? This is, uh, this just comes with the Cintiq. This is the stylus that comes with the Cintiq. Um, go to the close-up uh, camera. Yeah, that one. So, uh, it's, it's a pen that has, this pr particular one has 2,000, a little over 2,000 levels of sensitivity uh, the new one they're coming out with is going to have 8,000 levels of sensitivity. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, that's one of the things I love about Wacom is that they're constantly trying to make their products better. Uh, but it, it comes with the with the Cintiq, so that's that's it. There we go. If you don't feel motivated or find your work grueling, uh, how do you reignite your inspiration? I um, a lot of times I'll I'll play music. I will take a break, walk away from it for a little bit. I don't suffer that very often because I've I've just learned how to just keep going through it, um, or I just force myself to keep going, and eventually I'll get re-inspired. Um, I'll watch a movie um just anything that's going to take my mind off of it for a little bit and then uh and then i get back into it it's okay to lose your enthusiasm every once in a while um if it's a chronic thing that you might then you might want to kind of reevaluate maybe what you're doing uh because you know art is going to be hard and uh there's no way around that but uh and here you we can see i'm slow i'm do, doing a drawing that's closer to the next drawing than he is to the previous drawing because I want it to slow into this pose a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, just I'll do any number of things just to kind of get my mind off of it. Uh, how was it when you worked at Disney? How was it? Yeah. Oh, it was all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> it was awesome. No, it was great. I mean, uh, working at Disney was, is, was a dream job. It was as much as a pleasure as you would think it would be. Um, Everybody was great. I was working with some of the best artists in the world, and um, I loved everything about it. 
And the best crankers. Best, yeah, the best <laughs> crankers. Um, I just saw, I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but I just saw a movie uh, called Tag. Uh, and it really, it's a great, for me anyway, it didn't get, it didn't, it only scored, I think, like 55%, 55% so on, yeah, on Rotten Tomatoes. But uh, it, it, it was awesome. And to me, that was, those guys and that experience, that was what it was like working at Disney. And then we made cartoons at the same time. <laughs> we made movies. Uh, it was just a great, great experience. Uh, any book would you like to uh, recommend for learning animal anatomy, including uh, animal animation? Yeah. Um, first and foremost is Terrell Whitlatch. Uh, Terrell Whitlatch is a character designer, animal artist. Um, she's got a couple of books out on creature design. Let's see if this is going to work this time. Because I'm going to see if I can see if this screws up the white balance or not. But we've got it on main. We have it set to, we, not, yeah. to not on. Yes, we do. So the, here is one. It's called the Science of Creature of uh, Creature Design. Crap, it's see through. Is it? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> it's creating shadow though. I think that's yeah. I think it's just the uh, oh, that is auto yeah. Light, but. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. There it is. So uh, that one. And here's another one. I actually wrote the foreword for this one. Um, are bringing up the darkness. <laughs> and then here's the other one, Principles of Creature Design. Uh, Terrell is just an amazing encyclopedia, living encyclopedia of knowledge uh, when it comes to animal anatomy and structure and muscles and all kinds of stuff. And so she's probably my favorite animal artist, character, uh, creature designer, that sort of thing out there. I just really recommend her work. And is TV Paint 11 much different from uh, TV Paint 10? Um, it, it is not. It's not a lot different. No, it's not much different. But there there are some some improvements. And I can't remember what they are off the top of my head right now. Uh, did you use Wacom products uh, when you worked for Disney? I did. Everybody has a Cintiq at Disney. Matter of fact, you know, when I decided to go digital, I was you know I was designing. I was directing a new movie uh, that never got made, but it was called The King of the Elves. And uh, and I was doing everything on paper, but the film was going to be a, a digital, it was going to be, you know, 3D. And so I thought, you know what, I better start learning how to draw digitally because I'd always been afraid of it. And uh, and so, you know, working for Disney, it was really lucky because I just went in and said, hey, I, I need a computer. I mean, I need a, a Cintiq and I need... Photoshop and they said okay and I came into work the next day and I had a Cintiq and I had Photoshop <laughs> and uh, so yeah we use we use Cintiqs all over the place or and we the, did and the Cintiq at my uh, at my place is that the same one that you had uh, um, in your little art studio in, in uh, California no that's a no this oh, one that, that one I got when I was uh, living in Stewart uh, Stewart Uh, after finalizing your animated scene, will you be able to see your coloring process too? Or will we be able to see your coloring process too? I'm not going to be coloring. the. That's a different thing altogether. So I won't be coloring. Uh, there we go. Did you see the uh, Van Gogh animated film that was animated with... Uh, I, s I have not seen the whole thing. I've only seen clips, unfortunately. Uh, but I plan on seeing it. I really do. I really, really do. So here we go. He's opening his mouth, or he's starting to close his mouth in here. How do you uh, go about making an anim animal more anthropomorphic? Anthropo an anthropomorphic? Anthro yeah. It's and uh, Disney style. You know, it's just it's something that you learn over time. It's it's I, I, it's a hard thing to put into words. But, you know, that's why I study, even though I do a lot of animal drawing, I still study human anatomy and you know, expression and, you know, all that stuff because it really comes into play. And I automatically see animals, even in reality, I see animals as I see the character that they have anyway already. And so animals to me are already, in my mind's eye, they're already anthropomorphic. It's just, I relate to them. And so to me, it's not that hard to, to just go ahead and push it a little bit. Uh, 
Do you have any tips or advice for people who want to work in big uh, animation companies? Yeah, well, the biggest tip I can give you is you got to realize that there's, you know, there's a hundred other people out there, a hundred, there's a thousand other people out there, if not more, that want the same job you have. And so you really have to be, you got to be realistic and, and, you know, you might not get that job and you might get it too though. So, which, which is awesome. But if you don't have a backup plan. You know, the world doesn't, the sun doesn't rise and set with Disney or Pixar or DreamWorks or uh, Illumination or Blue Sky. There's a lot of other opportunities out there in the world of animation that aren't a big studio. You know, I, I used to think that way. I was with Disney for 21 years and the thought of leaving the studio would paralyze me. I just, I couldn't imagine not working at Disney. And then when I did leave, I realized, oh my gosh, there's a whole other world out there. Um... Aaron on YouTube asks, "What did I not like about working at Disney? There is nothing that I didn't I, that I didn't like at Disney. There, you know, there's there's things that you can complain about. There's there's really tight schedules. There's there's definitely a corporateness to it uh, at times. But I'll, at the end of the day, to be able to go in at a in a high profile job like that where I'm making films for the world uh, and get paid for it to draw these cartoons and anime, I I just can't I can't." I can't complain. There's nothing I can complain about. I mean, I, I loved everybody I worked with, and it was a wonderful time. Is my own personal question. What do I think the nature of reality is? Hold on, real okay. quick. Someone said, "What do I think we're in a in a in a simulation? We're in a game. We're in a simulation." Go ahead, Dustin. My own personal question: What was your most embarrassing moment at Disney? My most embarrassing moment at Disney. I know you have at least one in there. I've got a few of them. <laughs> Which one were you thinking? Um, I don't know if they're camera appropriate. That's what I'm. That's what I'm <laughs> thinking. <laughs> Maybe they're not. <laughs> How about what, what was the best? Because you talked about like uh, pranking each other. Like, what was the best prank you pulled off? Oh, the best prank I pulled off was the was the coleslaw prank. You know the that col- one. Oh yeah, the coleslaw. Yeah, there was a guy that. Uh, Tim Hodge. I don't know if Tim Hodge is watching right now, but I got you, you bastard. <laughs> but uh, it was you. It was a long brother. time ago. This is years ago. But we used to have a barbecue, you know, every once in a while. And Tim had been kind of pitting my brother and I. My brother was an animator at Disney as well, and he made it look like we were doing pranks to each other. And so we kept trying to get each other back, not realizing that Tim was setting the whole thing up. So when we finally realized it, we had had this big barbecue and there was a bunch of coleslaw that was left over. And so I got into his, after he left, I got into his stack of animation paper and the stack of paper was like this high. And I took about an inch, maybe an inch and a half of paper off the top and then I just cut a big window into the bottom half of his uh, of his paper, and I filled it with coleslaw. And then I very carefully put the other paper back on top and put the stack of paper on his desk, and it sat there for probably a month. It took him a month to get down to the to that area. To that area, and as he was getting closer, at one point. He's getting grease on. He's getting grease spots on his paper. He's like, "Hey, has anybody else got grease spots on their paper?" It's like, no. You remember the uh, <laughs> because you forgot about it. It was. It yeah. Was oh yeah. We long. we completely. We were in for the long haul. We completely forgot about it. Uh, Until it started sticking up the place. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And then that final layer. What what happened to that final layer? Oh, he got <laughs> down to it. It was just black and moldy, and <laughs> oh my god, it was horrible. There was bugs in it, and. Uh, YouTube question, how do animators get paid? By the scene, by character, by frame, by project? Um, there's various ways that animators get paid through free, you know, if you're freelance, they usually get paid by the foot, which is the film footage. Um, at the studio, you know, at a, if you're a full-time studio employee, like I was at Disney, um, I got paid by the hour. You know, I was an hourly employee. When I became a director, uh, I became a salaried employee. So I just made a certain amount per week, no matter how many hours I worked. Uh, so there's a lot of different different ways that animators get paid. Uh, do you do any exercises uh, targeting your back and wrists? Uh, no, not really. Not particularly. So I'm going to put a drawing right there. Yeah. How do you animate little figures in the background of TV paint? Maybe in a long shot, 
because you haven't um, enough thin pencil tools uh, to draw and animate them in this small size. No, we'll just we'll just animate them large and then shrink them down. Yeah, that's actually what it, um, the second half of that question was like. Maybe make them bigger and after export a smaller size and import them in like another background layer. Yeah, that's all. That's all. We just animate them large and then shrink them down. Do you think the uh, the, the Hershey chocolate bar prank? <laughs> <laughs> that was Tony Cipriano, another oh, bastard. That was Tony. I thought, the, I thought that was you that did no, that. No, 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 no. That was Tony Cipriano. Oh. <laughs> he went into the men's bathroom and brought a chocolate bar and just smeared it on everything. <laughs> on the stalls and the toilets. On the, All this time I thought it was your prank. No. And, and the, <laughs> on the sinks. on the Oh, it was horrible. And then he made sure as he was coming out, he smeared it all over the door handle so no one could get out. And you'd hear people going and go, oh, my God. And they're starting to scream. And yeah, yeah they never funny. came out. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't come out. Is there a tutorial on how to draw birds? Uh, do you have any recommendations on some bird drawing tutorials? I don't right currently. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to actually do one. I'm going to do a whole course on drawing birds. Uh, birds were the first animal that I started learning how to draw when I was a kid. My father liked to carve decoys. Uh, hunting decoys and uh, I um, hold on one second there we go I and so I sat I well he was carving I would sit in his in the, the in his in the garage where he was carving and I would I would study all the ducks and geese and all that stuff and I learned them all and drew them but uh but I digress I um I will be putting out uh, a course on drawing birds probably in the next few months um that'll be one coming up soon like i said and then uh, uh but as far as you know i don't know of any books or anything to look at currently specifically for birds i have one that i showed last week on drawing uh birds of prey there's a couple of things out there i mean there's a lot of if you go on amazon and just google uh, and do a search for you know, bird anatomy or something like that. I'm sure you'll find something. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that a new question? From, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, how is it working on po Pocahontas compared to other films you've done since historical events? Since historical events. Not sure what that means. How is working on Pocahontas compared to other films you've done since historical events? Not quite sure what that means, but I mean, working on Pocahontas is great. I worked with Eric Goldberg and Mike Gabriel were the directors. Now, Pocahontas is a little different because it was all shot in live action first, and then we used what they shot as reference for each of our scenes. So that was a little weird, um, but it, 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 we grew as animators because we got to see the subtleties in live action that I think later on it really affected the way I animated people. And... Uh, when you were still in the learning stage, do you remember which practice? Hold on one second. Let me come up here. There. Uh, were you still? In the, do you remember which practice you did the most? Uh, I just I did a lot of figure drawing, a lot of animal drawing. I mean, it just really did it over and over and over again. Um, Oh, here, okay, I understand now, because my, my screen was cut off. How was working on Pocahontas compared to other films you've done since it was based on actual historical events? Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, it's the same answer. It was just, it was really cool. Um, it was, it, to me, it was a great story. And, uh, um, and it was fun, you know, working under those directors. Working for those guys. Working for them, Fowlers. Working for a living. <laughs> uh, Brother Bear is my favorite Disney movie. And, uh, That's awesome. How, um, did you animate any of the scenes, or were you too busy with uh, the directing bit? No. Um, towards the end of animation, I went in, and uh, I'm changing some of this animation here. I actually animated, um, like, there's a, when, when uh, Kenai first wakes up as a bear... Uh, Byron Howard, who was the supervisor, you know, did that first bit. But then once Tanana, uh, Tanana, there's a shot where Tanana comes over and and she and it's his in, in his point of view. She walks towards him, 
and bends down, and I animated Tanana in that. Then there's a few shots of Kenai after that, where he's look he's looking at the chipmunks and he's looking at the geese and and all that stuff. I animated all that of him, so that was fun. Oh, here we go. I got to do this. Uh, what's here your bird of prey drawing book? Oh, it's not a drawing book. It's it's more of a reference book. This right here. It's called Birds of Prey. I'm not even sure if it's in print anymore. This book, uh, I think it was, what's the copyright on it? I think it was like 1979 or something. But it's, uh, oh, this one's 93. But I know, I, uh, I thought they had it, did it earlier. I thought it was an earlier version. Oh, no, I'm thinking of, of uh, the waterfowl. But uh, it's called Birds of Prey. By Floyd Schultz. Check it out. It's good. It's it's uh, it's just got all kinds of great stuff in it. So check it out. Check it out. Check it out, Mike. Check it out, Mike. There we go. So, cause see, I have four drawings that have to go right here between these two drawings right here, and so. I need to think ahead about where this little piece of meat actually I should probably should put it down here. Well, what softwares are usually required for an animator position? Software? Yeah, like TV Paint, Maya. Well, like... Yeah, I mean it's it's Maya for 3D. A lot of the studios are doing proprietary uh, stuff, but they you know all within Maya. Um, but it's, let me do this here. There. Uh, it's, yeah. So, I mean, for 2D, I think TV Paint or Toon Boom are, you know, the two main ones that, that studios use. And then there's also, you know, Maya and all kinds of stuff. Nick, Nick would probably know more than I would about that. How do you animate a crowd of uh, people or animals? Realistically, each person would be moving or reacting differently. It's <laughs> you just got to get in there and do it one at a time, and just work it all out. And a lot of times, I'll repeat characters, I'll flop them or whatever, just to, so I don't have to do everybody all the you know uh, because the eye won't pick it all up. But uh, there we go. Let me see something here. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry, Dustin. I'm okay. You okay? I'm all right. Don't worry. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. You sure you're fine? I'm fine. Okay. <clears throat> oh, was Brother Bear animated digitally? No, Brother Bear was animated on paper. And then the drawings were scanned, and everything was painted digitally. But uh, everything was, uh, the backgrounds were all painted in acrylic, and uh, the animation was all done in pencil. Um, do I worry less about tangents with the in-between since they go by so fast? Yes, exactly. I don't worry about tangents too much on in-betweens. I try to avoid them, but um, you're still going to get them every once in a while. But because they do go by, um, it's the key poses that you don't want tangents. And for those of you that don't know what tangents are, it's just areas that, uh, you know, maybe the wing is touching, and, and the drawing, the, they're, it's touching the neck in a way that it causes uh, attention. Let me see here. I'm going to turn this dialogue on real quick. Yeah. 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 You know, oh, yeah. Let me turn that on. You know, you know, you know. Here we go. You know. All right. You know. Got it. You know. You know. What is your favorite animation style? Favorite animated movie? Uh, my favorite animated movie. What is it, Dustin? 
got this. I got this question last week. What sausage is? party. <laughs> yeah, it's sausage party. <laughs> oh, Bambi. <laughs> Bambi. Yes, Bambi is my absolute favorite. Bambi and Pinocchio. Those are my two favorites. They just the artistry in those films just blows my mind, and uh, I'm I'm just a huge fan. And I've been lucky enough to sit in in the in the morgue, what they call the morgue at Disney, and you know go over and uh, and hold those the backgrounds and a lot of the animation, you know, flip the actual animation from the animators, and it's just amazing stuff. Sausage party. <clears throat> as soon as some of the food leaves the vulture's mouth, is the food independently animated from the vulture? If so, is it good to have another layer just for that? Yes. Absolutely. That's exactly, you'll see in there, in uh, some areas here, it just pops off. It's because I haven't animated it yet. I'm going to go back and animate it on another layer. So there's a deleted scene from Brother Bear with the chipmunk angry at Kenai because he won't eat him. That scene makes me laugh so much. Why did it make? Why did it not make the final cut? It was something that we were doing just as an experiment, and uh, that's funny because I storyboarded that, and then then we re-storyboarded it, and it was uh, Alex Cooper Schmidt, who's a good friend of mine. He's a uh, and he's still at Disney. He kind of wrote all that. And I I love when he sees the when he sees the giant berry. Yeah. And he goes, Bunchy balls. <laughs> We actually ripped that off from Splash, because in Splash, when he sees uh, her coming up out of the water, that's yeah. the guy at the at the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. He sees her and he goes, "Bocce balls!" <laughs> it's really funny. And he thinks it's a giant berry, but it's actually Kenai's nose. Yeah, and well, Kenai doesn't want to eat him because he's really a human, and so now all of a sudden the ground squirrel's really insulted that he's not good enough to eat. And he, steeps, and he keeps trying to shoot inside, get inside his mouth. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to to uh, to do that. And also there was that um, uh, kind of inside, like, innuendo joke. They tried to sneak in there with the two chipmunks. Like, are you sure they're not in there? But it was like the... But you added... I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that wasn't that wasn't really something we could keep in the movie. <laughs> yeah, those guys probably picked it up immediately. Went no. Nope. No, that's pretty. That's low hanging fruit right there. <laughs> uh, did you work on uh, the making of Atlantis? No, I did not work on Atlantis. Nor did I work on the making of Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't work on Atlantis. That was uh, that was made completely in California. I was at the Florida studio. The Florida studio, we made Brother Bear, uh, Lilo and Stitch, and Mulan. But we also worked on other film. I mean, we we did help out on other films. We just didn't have uh, we didn't have Atlantis. My uncle Travis did a Tarzan, but did he do Atlantis as well? I don't no. think so. No, he worked on Hunchback. Oh yeah, he did uh, Frollo. Frollo, Hunchback. yeah. He did. Uh, The elephant's name of Tarzan. Tantor? Tantor. Yeah. Did him and that. He did Stitch. Yeah. With Alex Cooperschmidt again. Yeah. Alex is a genius when it comes to character stuff like that. See, here's a tangent. See how the beak is kind of touching the wing? That's a tangent, but it's going to move right through it, so I'm not too, too worried about it. Do you agree that every animator has has his uh, or her own style of work? Yes. So, uh, how does it work with a couple of artists animating one character or parts of one scene? Well, uh, we have to. Well, luckily, animators uh, in two D, we have cleanup artists that came through and made sure everything was put on model. They redrew all of the animators' work to make sure that it looked all the same. So that was a cleanup artist's job. Um, but we also, I mean, we tried, I tr at least I tried, <laughs> to get our animation to look the way it's supposed to look according to the way that the supervising animator wanted it. Um, but yeah, it was cleanup artists, it was their job to kind of come through and put everything on model and make sure that it all, it all looked consistent. 
Do you know if there's any 2D animated movies that Disney is planning on doing, or are there, or are they just sticking to 3D? Films? They're just sticking to 3D. There's no 2D films currently in development that I know of. Now, I haven't, I haven't been at Disney since 2010. Um, I still have a lot of friends there, and uh, no one's told me about anything being developed. But I could be wrong. Yeah, new projects, um, they sometimes keep their lips pretty, pretty well sealed when it comes to uh, new projects. Sometimes. Yeah. True. What can be expected for the animation in the following years? What can be expected for animation in the following years? I, you know what? I, I think 2D is going to come back in, an, in some form or another. Honestly, in the indie gaming world, like the independent uh, gaming Oh, yeah. 2D is getting bigger it, and bigger. Oh, yeah. Um, like we've got Cuphead. There's a couple of other games out there. And there's also one that um, got announced uh, uh, just a little while ago for Nintendo Switch called Gris. And is that I the one you showed you me the, last night? Yeah, the one I showed you last night. And that yeah. one has beautiful 2D animation in there. If you guys want to check it out, it's a G-R-I-S. And uh, look up that name, uh, Nintendo Switch trailer, and you'll, you'll see what we're talking about. Uh, what do you think about uh, Disney sequels in general? Just for example, like Pocahontas uh, 2... Hunchback, uh, Brother Bear 2, like, um, do they keep the standard, or is the quality lower? I personally feel like the quality is a little bit lower. Uh, yeah. The budgets are a lot smaller, so you know, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to do that. Uh, Nick's got a question. Hello, Aaron. It's nice to be here again on Twitch. I uh, just wanted to know, except Nala, how many characters have you created for Disney and which ones? I've done a handful. I did, uh, I did Raja from Aladdin, I did Nala, I did Yao, and the ancestors for uh, for Mulan, and, you know, uh, uh, directing Brother Bear, uh, I, you know, was a big part of getting the characters together for that as well. So you can see the animation is getting smoother where I filled in the drawings. So here I want to get in, and I've got a drawing here that I ought to do. There we go. This actually is going to go here. What is your opinion on a director who is not open to take suggestions from his team versus ones who, who do? He won't make it. Simple as that. He won't make it. Uh, those directors are directors that no one will want to work with again. So uh, for me, it's very imperative that directors listen to the team. That's why they're there. That's why we spend so much time uh, hiring people, right? You know, you, you spend a lot of time looking at portfolios and, and getting people in. And uh, directors that don't listen to the team and let them do their job and let them take ownership of, of, of a film... Won't make it. Yeah, actually, I, personally, I like that. Um, I have that mentality in this uh, in this business here. It's not like it's my way or the highway. It's like if we have a if we have a suggestion or opinion, you actually listen. Sometimes we even implement that into the business. Like oh yeah, like these live streams, for instance. Yeah, it's, to me, it's a big deal. You, know, you got to let people feel like they're part of. And, and not, I don't mean make them feel like like you know make them part of the process. Yeah. For sure. And if you do that, you know people will take ownership, and they'll they'll feel like they're part of the process of making these films, and they'll 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 the morale will go way up. And they'll actually feel like they're they're actually do they're really doing something like really making a difference. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, this is going to come up here. What's your opinion on how the Disney princesses look in the upcoming Wreck-It Ralph two? Do you think <laughs> their opinions on what appears to be Disney meta? is a good direction for female anime characters? I mean, like having 
to be saved by a man and being the woman in peril, yada, yada, yada. Like, what are your thoughts? Well, for, for Wreck-It Ralph 2, it's all tongue-in-cheek. It's all meant to be a joke. Yeah. So don't take it too seriously. <laughs> YouTube question. How is drawing and animating helped you in other parts of life? Wow, that's a big philosophical question. Um, it was really, I guess the, probably the biggest thing that directing and animating and all that has helped me with is just communication. You know, working at an animation studio and, and actually it's more specifically directing an animated movie really requires a lot of communication, whether it's visual communication through drawing or talking or whatever it might be. Um, so it's really helped me articulate uh, which is why I think I can do these 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 streams and draw at the same time. And it's you know it's I think it's through my experience directing that's really helped me to you know be able to articulate. You know I'll get caught up in my words sometimes as I'm drawing if I'm trying to figure out uh, you know a problem or something. Uh, my brain will kind of shut down my speech center. <laughs> but other than that, it's. Uh, it's, I think it's helped me in that way. Communication. Yes. <clears throat> hey, Dustin, you snoring over there? Are you snoring? Are you sleeping? No! <laughs> I'm just looking at questions here. Don't skip well, anybody. I'm trying not to I so know. many questions. I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's so many questions, oh my lord! Um, what are your thoughts on listening to music while animating? Do you listen to music uh, when you're not animating uh, dialogue, like a action sequence, for example? I can't. Uh, I am not able to listen to music while I'm animating. Now, I can listen to music um, when I'm in betweening, like I'm doing now. Because all the hard parts already done, I'm just kind of filling in the drawings. I might have a little bit of thing, a few things I have to figure out, but um, but yeah, I. Uh, there we go. Like now, I just shut down here. I, my speech, my speech center just shut down because uh -oh. <laughs> I'm looking at something. But no, I listen. I listen. Uh, I listen to music. You know, usually when I'm at this stage. I was trying to find this plug earlier. Didn't realize it was right there the whole time. There we go. This has got to drag more. Have you watched any stop motion animation? And what's your opinion on stop motion in general? I love it. I love stop motion. Stop motion is just a 3D version of what I do. What animal would you like to animate that you haven't uh, yet done? Oh, there's birds. There's some. I'd love to do b more birds, not like the vultures, but you know, birds in flight and that sort of thing. Um, elephants. I'd love to do elephants. So there's yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, I think it would be interesting for future um, future lessons, like. You know how you do all the uh, the locomotion uh, uh, segments for each of your animals? Uh huh. They're always sideways. But what if um, you also did like the old, over the top to see like the way that their oh yeah their hips and their uh, their shoulders sway whenever they're walking? That's a good idea. That's great. Got a I got a Twitch question. Have you ever tried? Do you, have you ever tried to hand my hand at animating? Mimicking the milk call head wiggle, I have not. I've done. I've done a little bit of it. I mean, he's he's kind of doing it here, where he's saying, right through here, a little bit, where he's shaking his head. If that's what you're talking about. But milk call was milk call. I mean, that there'll never be another milk call. <laughs> Drawing. I've got a milk call drawing, an original, in here somewhere. 
my office got moved around so I can't I'm not sure where it is training course for elephants I know there's a PDF booklet but a full course would be great it's coming yeah we're gonna I'm gonna be doing one I'm actually gonna be doing one on the on the Giants of Africa so it'll be elephants rhinos giraffes hippos all that kind of stuff a uh, YouTube question uh, will drawing not safe for work images ruin chances at studio occupation well it depends on I mean we did a lot of not safe for work drawings at Disney um, it just depends on how tasteful, how distasteful they are. You can, you know, you got to be careful about what you draw. You know, it's, it's okay to be an adult and do adult themed stuff. Sometimes that's, you know, funny or whatever. But, um, if you do something offensive, you know, especially in this day and age, you better watch your back. Uh, cause you don't you know, there's that work is not the place for that. study in a university I studied illustration I went to college to be an illustrator I didn't study animation I um let me get this here uh, I went to the Ringling College of Art and Design and at the time it was they we didn't have animation and animation hadn't made it the resurgence back when I was in college like it has now and so uh, when I went to college uh, I, I didn't even really think about animation and I wanted to be a painter, an illustrator. I wanted to work for National Geographic and do natural history type illustrations. And, uh, but I just never, I never did, never got to. Uh, I found out that National Geographic was, uh, was they prim primarily freelanced all their work out. And I didn't want to freelance anymore. So that's when I heard that Disney was offering an internship. And so I put together a portfolio and that's how I got in. Yeah, started at the Ringling College of Art and Design. So once again, I'm just going to look at those, see how we're doing. How did you get to Disney in the first place? Did they see your drawings or did you go to them? They came to the school. They had representatives from their training department come to Ringling and we had sent portfolios in. They reviewed the portfolios, picked the, the ones that they liked and then we went in and did an interview process, and uh, I was lucky enough to get picked. And that's how I got in. There we go. So you can see the animation is getting schmoover and schmoover. There we go. I'm going to have to adjust some of these feathers flopping up in the air because they're just going to kind of stick. Is there any truth that you know of, of animators being high or on drugs when creating certain films like Alice in Wonderland? Except? You're thinking about Ward Kimball. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there, so who knows? But I know Ward liked to party. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'll say there. Ward was a cool guy. I got to meet him. He was a lot of fun. Do you have any plans to do partnering projects with Ringling? I am a, a 98 uh, uh, CA grad and love seeing all their current uh, collaborative work. No, nothing. There's nothing current. No. Uh, YouTube question. Do you have any tips on teaching art? Uh, that's a really broad, big question. Um, I my, my biggest thing about teaching is, I think teaching is better shown than explained. A lot of art teachers will try to explain how to do something. 
I like to show how to do it. And I think that's a big difference. And uh, people, you know, especially artists, learn visually, I think. And so I try very hard to demonstrate. I'll, I'll talk about a concept, and then I'll say, like this, for example. And I'll sit down and I'll demonstrate it. To me, that's, that's really important. What kind of tablet do you recommend for someone uh, who is wanting to start learning how to animate? Uh, you could you could get an Intuos, which is just a regular tablet that you you know that's independent from the screen, um, or you can get a Wacom Cintiq if you've got the extra money to do it. Um, I recommend not getting anything any smaller than a 22 inch, uh, just because it's hard to, especially in really tight animated shots, it's hard to get. Uh, it's just harder. Uh, I like a, the biggest screen I can get. Now I understand that could be cost prohibitive so, for some, but um, you know I, I figure if you're you know if you're gonna be doing it a lot, get the best tools you can get in order to do it. And so I'm a big believer in having the right tools. I can't see, but are you animating in singles or doubles? Right now I'm on doubles or twos. Animating on twos. Right here, th this is a little section through here on ones. Right through there. That's all on ones. But these are all on twos through here. go uh, do you have any joint pain how do you usually handle it it's been preventing me from animating a lot uh, I don't have any joint pain so oh what did I do with my I did something What'd on you my do? I don't know I did something I, my pencils just got really dark I gotta redo that oh no, oh, no. Let me go back to that one. No, it's gotten real dark. I gotta change it up. I was hitting the hitting the wrong uh, button. Where is the opacity? Let me bring that down. Maybe it's the opacity. Nope. Let me save it. Come over here. Click on that. Click back. There we go. I got it back. I got it back. All right, YouTube question. Is it true the Walt Dis that Walt Disney had a rule that no females were allowed to do creative work or animation in the studio other than clean up, and, uh, clean up ink and paint? No, that is not true. Uh, that's not true at all. Because there was, uh, later on, there's a lot of women that were designers and, and uh, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, Blair. Oh, man. Hold on. Anyway, no, it's not true. Sorry. I'm drawing a blank because my, my brain is on uh, vultures, and I can't get my brain uh, to thinking about Disney history. Um, uh, Twitch question. What is the best way to clean up, to do clean up in animation? Uh, the best way is you can, you first of all, animate... Try to animate as clean as you can. That way your cleanup later on is going to be a little easier. But if that's not the case, you know, if you're animating on paper, you can rub the drawings down lightly with an eraser and then redraw them cleanly. Um, that used to be a, a way that they did it. Another, if you're doing it digitally, like I'm doing now, uh, like I did before, what I did was, here's my layer underneath, and I just turned it way down. If I... Let me jump ahead here and turn this off. You can see that um, I turned, you know, this was the opacity when I animated it, but here it is, you know, I'll, I'll just bring it way down and then I put a layer on top like this and then I redrew it like that, you can see. So that's, there's the redrawn cleaned up version. So that's how I do it in TV Paint. Right there. Where's my drawing? 
That's the one I'm working on. There it is. <clears throat> oh, shoot. There we go. Uh, good. What do you got, Dustin? Okay. What you got, man? Dave Clayton. Dave! Dave, my friend Dave Clayton. Bird? Well, everybody knows that the bird's a word. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, we might be coming over to the UK very soon, before the end of the year. Uh, we just got it. Uh, probably just Nick and I. We've got a request. I have to do a. Uh, for a gaming company there, they want me to come out and do a uh, a three day lecture. So we're gonna be there probably in December. Since you're a wildlife kind of guy, have you? I'm a wildlife kind of guy. Annual duck stamp contest. I used to enter it every year when I was younger, but um, I've kind of grown out of my. I don't do that kind of art anymore. That's a very photorealistic, very tight. Uh, type of painting and that's just not my style anymore uh, but I used to enter it every year have you ever seen a vulture with its head buried deep inside the guts of some roadkill alongside a, a Florida highway <laughs> yes <laughs> I've seen them rip an armadillo limb from limb uh, <laughs> uh, <glue. laughs> alright let's see here There we go. Mm -hmm. You're taking a swallow. What, su what successful advice would you give to a graduating class of 2D animators? Um, just keep pushing. And, and I, I've actually given this advice. And it's called, I give this lecture called Persistence of Vision. And it's basically talking about me <laughs> and my career but it really applies to everybody. I just tell it from my point of view because it's I've lived it. There's going to be a lot of things that you're going to go through in your career, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, things in personal that are personal to you that will happen to you that you don't expect. I've had a lot of things happen to me uh, that have affected my work. And, you know, when I started out in the animation industry as a 20-year-old student, I thought I knew exactly where I was going to be and do and all that kind of stuff. And um, I've done a lot of what I thought I was going to do, but I've also done so much more things that I never expected. And just know that as long as you persist in this vision of wanting to be an animator, wanting to be an artist, then no matter what happens to you, you're going to end up in some place that's good because you're creating. But you'll, be end up, you'll end up in a place that you never expected, that you never imagined. And, uh, and that's probably the best piece of advice I can give you is just to persist in your vision of wanting to be an artist, wanting to be an animator. And uh, no matter what, no matter what. And, uh, and if you do that, then, then you're going to have a great career. And that's my piece of fatherly advice. Is it possible to over animate and make too many in-betweens? Oh, yeah. And then it just gets slow and mushy. So absolutely. And I'm being careful. I'm trying not to do that now. I'm going to go, I'm going to split the difference here. I'm going to put an in-between here and in between here. There we go. There it is. There we go. Have you worked with uh, Photoshop Animate and Character Animate? Are they used uh, much in the industry or are TV Paint and other ones you mentioned leagues better uh, for, for leagues for. their leagues better T Photoshop animate is not for character like what I'm doing now it's not for character animation like this it's it gives you the ability to you know they'll give you some stock characters that you can use but it doesn't do this and um, it's not made for you know filmmaking um, to me if you if you're interested in doing 2d animation get the right tool TV paint is the right tool Toon Boom is the right tool if you if you want to go with Toon Boom, but don't don't get some of this other some of these other ones. You know these are these are the the industry standards, and uh, I really recommend TV Paint. You know because I've I use it every day. Uh, it's a great piece of software. Are we able to see this lecture online afterward? Um, the whole course you will be able to uh, get it. Uh, 
on my website, at my website, creatureartteacher.com. <laughs> That's my signal to Dustin. <laughs> Creature Art Teacher, that's where you'll be able to see it. Uh, this is going to be a course. Um, we will put, uh, uh, you know, whenever we release a new course, we definitely put some freebies out there so you can get a sense of what the course is like so that when you, you know, you can decide if it's something you want to purchase or not. Um, and so that's what we will definitely be doing there. And but, let me um, see. Is, is this particular live stream going to be saved after? After oh, this. Is that what they meant? There's, I think that's kind of half and half. Of oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> this you have your, this your is going to be saved. All my live streams are saved. Um, and you can probably the best place to go is either Twitch or um, uh, YouTube. Dustin, you're so quiet compared to your father's. Is there any way we can hear you better? Oh, we're yeah. He's just so far away from the mic. Yeah, he's really far away from the mic. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, Nick says, actually, Adobe Animate is used for tons of films and TV games. I didn't know that. It's very comparable to Toon Boom. You might be thinking of Adobe Character Animator. That's exactly what I was thinking, which is mostly stock characters and puppets. So I am wrong. Uh, I wasn't aware of uh, Adobe Animate. So I will look into that. Um, and YouTube question, at what age did you know that you wanted to be an artist? At about age two. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. My parents told me I was going to be an artist starting at the age of two. And they never said I was going to be anything else. I was always going to be a commercial artist is what they used to say. I don't know. I never knew what a commercial artist was. But uh, yeah, I, they said I was going to be a commercial artist. And Dave is wondering if you could say hello to Fleur. Hey, Fleur! How are you? It's nice to see you. I'm talking to you all the way over from Florida, all the way across the ocean. And I am talking to you in front of hundreds of people around the world. So now everybody knows who you are, Fleur. Uh, were your parents supportive of your career choice? Yeah, very much so. Yep. My parents have always been, I've always had a good support system as far as what I wanted to do. So I've never, there's never been any issue there. So here also, I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting the overlap on that piece of meat right. There, that swallow is working better now. You can see the mm -hmm. I swallow it right down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a little bit of, of a drag issue with that piece of meat, but I, I'll get it working better. Right there, it slows down. Right through here, the physics look a little weird when it comes up. Right through here, I should get it. This one here, I'm going to change and get it to come up this way a little bit more. Have you ever done work for commercials? If not, would you ever consider it? Oh, I've done, yes. As a matter of fact, if you, uh, the last commercial piece I did was um, uh, a commercial that I worked on uh, that was released in the UK called The Bear and the Hare. It was a John Lewis. John Lewis is a, a department store. Um, it was a, uh, a big Christmas advertisement that we did uh, uh, animated. And that was that was kind of seen all over the world. Uh, uh, it was played in the UK, but a lot of people all over the world saw it. It was a pretty, it was a really fun project. So yes. So I just made that little adjustment. And that helps a little bit. There we go. All right, Twitch question. As a fan, I'll be really glad to hear your uh, your personal opinion on my favorite 3D movie, Wall-E. Oh, I loved Wall-E. Matter of fact, when we when uh, before the movie was released, we watched it in storyboard form, and we used to go up and give notes and everything. And the original version of Wall-E, 
There was no dialogue anywhere in the movie at all. He didn't say Eve. He didn't say there was no dialogue. And it was really a test in pantomime. And part of me kind of wishes that they would have stuck with that idea. Uh, just just because. Uh, but I, I love... I, I love that film just be, because of what I was saying, because they they still were able to do a lot of pantomime anyway. And, you know, the entertainment that they were able to get without dialogue, I thought was just absolutely stunning. David, uh, Dave, uh, Andrew Stanton is, um, he's just an amazing director and, uh, great story guy, great director. He also did Finding Nemo. Uh, so you can see he's, you know, he's just a really great, he just knows, he knows his stuff. Yeah. Wally's probably one, one of the best animated features in my personal opinion. Yeah. It's just, it's just awesome. Such lovable, lovable characters. And even with not much dialogue with, through their body language alone, you can see every single emotion yep. that they portray. Yep. That's absolutely right. And plus, it was that movie that made me find the classic uh, musical Hello Dolly. Yep, I know. <laughs> you were a big fan of that. I remember oh, when yeah. you were a kid. Well, actually, um, way back then, I was more into like Singing in the Rain and Break of Doom, but I yep. didn't know about Hello Dolly until after watching Wally. Yep, that's right. Uh, do you still keep record of your old art, old as in like while you were still in school? Oh yeah, I've still got I've got uh, I've got some old stuff laying around. Uh, one of these days I'll do a little, I'll uh, show it on the I've, I showed it a few a while back on a live stream I think I did on YouTube. YouTube question: Could you do a video on how to use a dope sheet? AKA also known as an exposure sheet. Yes, I will do that sometime in the future. I won't do it today, but uh, cause that is a big kind of talk on itself. But um, yeah, the, for those of you that don't know, the, the dope sheet or the exposure sheet is basically the sheet where we list all the, you know, how long to, how long to hold each drawing. It's where the camera moves are. It's all the different layers of animation. If there's effects animation, everything goes on that sheet. It's basically the roadmap for everyone else on the film to understand how that shot is laid out. Has camera directions. Has it's got everything. Boop, 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 boop. All right. How are we doing on time? 2.33. So we got about another half hour. I'm just going to keep working my way through here. Yeah, I'm going to probably go back through and adjust some of the overlap on that little piece of meat. But I'm digging. Biggest thing I'm looking at now is just that big swallow. That feels pretty good. Uh, the commercial stuff you were talking about before. Uh, is that the one done with a mix of uh, stop motion? Yes. We animated everything in 2D first, and then uh, and then they were it was cut out. Each drawing was uh, scanned and printed on a board, and then they were cut out, and then those boards were put into a live uh, uh, a model set. It's pretty cool. It was a great process. Have you ever worked with? build based animations in Toon Boom or programs alike using character builds? I don't know what that means. So no, I have not. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Also, using character you, builds. Have you ever animated awareness films or shorts to benefit wilderness uh, conservation projects or consider doing it? Yeah, there was a project we did a while back. Um, Oh, I see why that's like that. There was a project we did a while back at Disney um, where we were, it was uh, for man, for watching out, you know, for manatees. It was uh, Jimmy Buffett who sponsored it. And it was all about, you know, 
making sure that you know you're aware of of manatees out on the water it, and it was it was played in florida where we have a huge manatee population and one of the problems we have is that manatees are they they end up getting run over by boats and uh and so in this case we did a little uh you know awareness campaign oh and the um the the woman animator you're talking about at disney um somebody says uh her name was mary blair mary blair thank you i kept wanting to say preston blair <laughs> but you know it was mary blair yes thank you yeah watercolor has been worked uh, for disney from uh, 1911 to 1978 yep that's when she lived uh, but yeah but she was a watercolorist she she had a very distinctive design sense which was really cool very flat design it was very beautiful a lot of uh, her influences in uh, Alice in Wonderland um, when, you, when you're finishing a work uh, like the color and last uh, touch-ups uh, do you still use TV paint or do you use Photoshop for each picture oh TV paint still use it TV paint for everything for TV paint, paint for everything yep yeah. hold on one second <laughs> okay, just want to make sure I'm getting his mouth in the right position. YouTube question. Do you ever travel to other countries for studies and reference for the Disney movies you are part of? If so, did you try any foreign food dishes? First of all, I travel, I, I do a lot of traveling. Just in the last year alone, I've been to 10 different countries. Uh, so yes, I, we travel a lot. When I was with Disney... Uh, for Brother Bear, we we traveled a lot to Alaska, you know, not foreign countries because the movie took place in the United States, in North America, I should say. Um, but um, I do travel a lot, and when I travel, I Nick will tell you, I I make it a I make it a a goal to try something new every time and to try something really weird and crazy. So, you know, in Latin America, I was eating a lot, we were eating a lot of bugs and grubs, you know, things like that. Um, I've eaten some weird stuff in Asia. Uh, but I also, you know, love to get the really good, you know, gourmet local foods as well. Uh, so, yes, I do that. And Dave just said, don't tell the India story. <laughs> no, I won't tell the India story. <laughs> that was a bad mess that was a bad mess my my eating caught up to me let's just put it that way the person that asked about the um adding in the final touches in uh uh tv paint says that i'm still using tv 10 pro and it seems like photoshop has many more options for well if that's if that's the case then use photoshop yeah absolutely You know, you know, you know, you can see that swallow. You know? Let me turn off that sound. There we go. We're getting there. <laughs> Nick says, please tell the India story. I am not telling the India story. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. You're just going to have to imagine it. And about Mary Blair, uh, was she the one that made the trees and plants for Sleeping Beauty? The sort of rectangular trees and bushes? No. That was not Mary Blair. That was uh, Ivan Earl. Ivan, Ivan Earl did the did the style design of for uh, Sleeping Beauty. Gotcha. Gotcha. Gotcha there, So we're mate. getting there. Slowly. Slowly but surely. Don't call me Shirley. I am serious. Don't call me Shirley. All right. You got it. All right, all right Captain. I got to go back here. Turn the sound back on. <laughs> okay, so he's going into a N shape. On his mouth. So now that you're doing um, uh, 
doing this in twos to make it a 24 frames per second style? It's already 24 frames per second. The twos is just the number of frames that I hold the drawing for. Right. It's always going to be, even if I did fours, ones, whatever, it's still 24 frames per second. So there's no way you can make it look like it's 60? No. There's no way I can make it look like it's 60 frames per second. Because it's all, it's, that's a standard. It has to be done at, it has to be made at 60 frames per second. I've made this right from the beginning. This has been made at 24 frames per second. No chat. So this is like listening to a program on the radio. So soothing. <laughs> That's my goal, baby. I live to please. <laughs> so he said, Dustin, Dustin does a great radio announcer voice from the early 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> from the 1930s? The oh, my God, the humanity. The humanity. <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great game on the... <laughs> Actually, I want to do this here. Remember the, uh, what was it? Was it last week or the week before with the uh, watercolor? That was last week. Was yeah, it? yep, that was last week. It was whenever he brought out the hair dryer. And we're off to the races. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I have a uh, um, question uh, towards me, if that's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, one last question for Dustin. Okay. Uh, have you done any <laughs> okay. work, and is there any way uh, to see it? Um, well, on my Facebook, uh, you can add me to your uh, Facebook page. I don't mind at all. Um, but in my photo albums, I do have... Um, some artwork that I've that I've done, and also um, I play a, a particular game called Forza uh, series, and I've made some car wrap designs through that game, uh, through its. Uh, uh, wow, well, I'm drawing a blank, but basically, yeah, all my uh, artwork uh, is through there, and also on YouTube I do. That's why I make all my. Uh, uh, Mavic Pro cinematic stuff. So, yeah, so that's where you can see all my stuff. And back to you. <clears throat> yeah. So how much longer do you think you'll be working on this? Like another couple more days? I'll days? be on this for another, yeah, three. I, I'm going to try to have it done this week. I'll probably work on it through the weekend. But uh, I, I've got family coming into town as well. Oh, Dustin, your camera's frozen. My camera's frozen? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> try Once again. Try opening and closing that thing. There we go. See if that helps. Maybe if we unplug and then plug back in. There you go. All right. So I just want to make sure those head turns are working. Let me go. Let me so far, so good. Nope. Still nothing. All right, well, you're stuck. No. So we got about 15 more minutes, and uh, let's do some more questions, Dustin. Uh, let me see if I can find one. We kind of went from questions more into just comments. Uh-huh. Uh, well, Nick has got one. YouTube question. What is your earliest drawing painting or painting memory? Um... That's a good question. My, my earliest memory, I used to, for some reason, I used to draw, I was fascinated, when I was about three years old, I was fascinated by big earth movers and snakes. I loved snakes. And so I would combine them in my drawings and I would draw big bucket loaders digging holes, but it was like a cross section of the ground. So they're digging holes and then underneath the ground there were snakes crawling through the ground. And I used to draw that constantly, constantly. And uh, that's my earliest drawing memory. Or drawing airplanes. I love drawing airplanes. Have you met uh, Sheldon uh, Bornstein? 
for instance? No. Uh, do you recommend any comprehensive uh, human anatomy book for studying? Comprehensive human anatomy. Uh, I have to think on that one. I'm not sure off the top of my head. There are, and I don't have them available. There's one I'm trying to think. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, any more questions? Oh, wait, no, that's mine. <laughs> what? I was just trying to crack a joke. Oh, I got to see what he's saying. Asking any questions. That's okay. Me, we'll just me, sit and draw. Let me look deep into history and see if I can find any older ones. Uh, he's still doing that mm shape. Um, are you using the standard or the pro version of TV? I'm using the pro version. There's not really any difference other than in the pro version, you're able to connect up, you know, to create a pipeline with other with other TV paint users. But other than that, all the all the everything else is the same. Uh, what's the best way to get into uh, the creative film business? As I you know, a lot of uh, creative jobs ask for at least one year of experience. Ah. Uh. That's a that's a good question. It's been so long, you know. I think you just got to really keep pounding the pavement, and, and you know, and be able to be a, a, a willing to work at maybe some up and coming studios that are really, you know, really looking to that are desperate to hire. You know, get your feet wet at a smaller place, and then and then uh, you know get some experience that way. That's probably my biggest piece of advice is to do that. Nick says the pro version also has the smart CTG color layers. Regular does not. I didn't realize that. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, Nick you know, says, Nick is always correcting me. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Nick is always correcting me. Yeah, he, he, he kind of he has a tendency <laughs> to do that. Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Got one nod in there. Uh, do you ever do uh, character rigging, or do you prefer to stick with uh, hand drawing each frame? I've never done any character hand rigging or uh, any character rigging. No, that's three D. No. <laughs> no, this is uh, this is all hand drawn animation. So yeah, I prefer hand drawn animation. I like the the handmade quality of doing hand hand drawn animation. Can never beat a classic. That's right. That's right, man. Uh, for illustration and only illustration, is Photoshop okay? Oh yeah. Or is there another software that you recommend? I I pretty much use Photoshop exclusively in my digital illustration. Uh, I do use a little bit of Painter. Uh, that's another good one. But pretty much Photoshop is it for me. Uh, before you end your stream, uh, how do you get in the zone, quote-unquote? I'm always in the zone, man. <laughs> I don't have to get in the zone. I'm already in the zone. Auto zone. <laughs> no. I, uh, you know, there's sometimes I just, it, it's, I'm not in the zone, like, you, like you're saying. Uh, but I just start working. And if I'm into what I'm doing, then I'll get there. I, I just get in the zone. Um, uh, now there's times that are you're going to struggle with that and let me get this really quick here sorry um as you'll notice these head turns are not straight in betweens so i have to think about i got to think about it in space a little bit more a little bit more you ever get ideas for drawings or animations in dreams yes i do actually really yeah 
and some of the best, not necessarily dreams, but some of the best story changes or story ideas that I had come up with, that I would come up with, uh, come to me when I'm right on the verge of sleep. Isn't there or in the shower. <laughs> isn't there like another director or writer that, that had that same thing where he he would sleep, but he will go through a dream, and the moment he wakes up, he writes down what he saw in his dream? Yeah. I can't remember who it was, but yeah. And um, let me turn this back on. Um, I always kept a pencil and paper next to my bed. For that reason, yep. What's the average frames per second for Disney films you worked on? Frame average frames per second is twenty four. I've always worked at twenty four. Roy from YouTube asks, "Is it okay to make your thumbnails keys on a timeline?" I actually often do that. I'll take my thumbnails and blow them up and I'll make them keys and use that for my scribble pass. I'll connect it with all the animation and then I'll go back through and redraw everything. So yeah, absolutely. There's a Twitch question. What is your preferred method of animating extreme speed? Dry bush, multiple smears? Uh, uh, and why the preference? Okay. I've done all of those. I've done dry brush, I've done multiples, and I've done smears. My favorite is smears because... Um, it tends to make the animation more fluid, and uh, and for me, it, it's it's it mimics a little bit more. Dry brush kind of mimics it too, uh, but it mimics a little bit more of what film when when you're looking at you know something moving going by fast on you know live action film, it kind of smears across the frame. But also kind of dry brushes, but I I really I try to imagine the imagery broken up into twenty fourths of a second. And so I imagine the smearing happening at, you know, happening at 24th of a second. So if my hand goes by really fast, I'll smear it across. Um, if you look at, I did a piece of animation of this hippo dancing. It's on my YouTube channel. And there's some, <laughs> there's some sections where the hippo is zipping from pose to pose. And I did all of those, the in-betweens, as smears. And when you watch it, it becomes very fluid, the way the hippo moves from, from pose to pose. Have you done any illustrations for National Geographic? I haven't, and it's it's been my lifelong goal. I, I really would love to do it at some point. Uh, was Disney back in the day more chilled out than it is now? I keep hearing stories, not necessarily from Disney, but professional in-house animators, uh, saying working in a studio is like working in a sweat house. It worries me. Uh, it, it's no. I mean, you gotta. There's a lot of disgruntled people too. You know, look, they work hard. You know, the the schedules are tough. We're not gonna lie. You know, there it, it's, but it's not working in a sweat house. Come on, you're getting paid good money to do. Yeah, you're working a lot of hours, but you're getting paid good money to make cartoons for a living. It's not a sweat house. So you know, you got to take that with a grain of salt. And uh, but they, there are you know there are there are schedules that have to be kept. And they are getting tighter and tighter. I'll admit that, but no, not in my mind, it's not anything. Not, not, it's not at all like that. And it's you know they treat when they are doing lots of overtime. They're getting massages. They're getting free meals. They're getting you know a lot of perks to you know to help them along the way. So yeah, so don't listen to everything you hear. And yeah, it is tough. You know, I'm, I'm you know it, it is, but yeah. Anyway, what do we got? Twitch question. What's my? Oh, that's the same one. <laughs> hey Nick, take down the question so I don't start repeating it. Hey, I, I just corrected Nick. <laughs> that's a first. How often do you use the Zoom tool? Uh, not very. Uh, I try to, I just keep everything, if I'm doing something really small, then I will. Is try to keep that authentic feel of animating huh? on paper? Say that again? Is it just you're trying to keep that authentic feel instead of... Yeah, it's just, I just don't like having to zoom in. So... So I'm going to go back and put those these head turns on ones 
and uh, and they'll get a, a much smoother feel to them. Follow-up question: What is the difference between these three techniques? Dry brush, oh, a dry brush, multiples, and, and stretch. Dry brush is literally that. If I'm moving my hand across for that drawing, you know, I might have my hand like dragging a little bit, and then they'll dry brush some color to make it look like it's blurring across the screen. The other one is multiples, and so if I throw my hand across the, the you know, in the animation, you know, there's a drawing that might have a hand here, a hand here, a hand here, fingers. So I'm doing multiples across the screen. And then the, the wipe is, you know, if I move my hand really across, uh, across the screen, I'll distort my hand so it's really wide to cover that distance, and then it catches up. So those are the three kind of differences right there. Uh, Kevin Wood says, hey, Aaron, great seeing you here. Uh, when are you making your next public appearance? We are going to be, I'm going to be in Manila uh, in the Philippines, September 15th, 14th and 15th. And then we're going to be in Colorado, in uh, near Pueblo, Colorado, uh, September 25th, right? September 25th or 26th. And then uh, two weeks after that, we're going to be in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we're doing some stuff down there. And then two weeks after that, I'm going to be in Tokyo and Osaka. And then after that, in November, we're going to be at CTN. So that's going to be cool. So CTN in Los Angeles. And then in December... We might be in the UK uh, at a studio there. So we're going to be bopping kind of all over the world over the next several months. But uh, that I think I got everything. I think so. So uh, that's going to kind of wrap it up. I'm going to take a break. Actually, I'll do one more drawing. Let's do one more drawing. And, uh, and I'll take another question. Another question. Another question on. Let me hold on real quick. Let me figure out the mouth shape. Er, 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 er. It's got to be an er, er, er. You never really, er, really, you never really understand a person. Okay, Aaron, what would be the difference between this animation course you are working on now and the complete animation course I have up already? In the complete animation course, I kind of touch on acting for animation. I focus mainly on a broader, a broader look at animation. I talk about the, the 12 fundamentals of animation. Um, and then I talk about basically the, the, you know, how to, the, the production part of it. What I do as far as creating an animated scene. Um, and, I, and I do talk about acting to a degree. This course, I'm talking only about acting, and I'm going to be using several different shots to explain different principles that I think about. And I'm going to talk about straight-ahead animation as opposed to pose-to-pose -pose with examples. I'm going to talk about you know, acting in it itself, how I think about phrasing of dialogue, how I think about um, just the, the portrayal of the acting, you know, just uh, from literally an acting standpoint. Um, there, I'll talk about the, you know, so there's the artistic side, there's the technical side that I'll talk about. It's just going to be much more in depth than what I have in my, uh, my overall full animation course. So that one just covers, you know, all of animation pretty much in general, whereas this one will cover the specific of acting for animation. I'm not going to go over the principles of animation or anything like that. So if you're looking for something like that, then you want... You're going to want my uh, my my complete animation course, but if you're past all that and you're looking for something that's a bit more um, specific, for, you know, for acting, then that that's what this is. What's the best advice you ever got from an artist? Hold on one second. Sorry. The best advice I ever got from an artist. <laughs> really. Um. Best advice. 
I I had really I had good advice all, all, all throughout. I'm gonna just cheat treat cheat that um, throughout my career. Glenn Keane had given me a lot of great advice as far as just you know sticking to it, being loose, you know all that kind of stuff. But when I was young, probably the best piece of advice, or it wasn't really advice, it was just a life lesson. When I was at, uh, when I was um, applying to Ringling, I was 18 years old, and I thought I was a really good artist. I was a little cocky, and uh, and there is a print company that specialized in wildlife prints called Mill Pond Press, and they were in Venice, Florida, just south of Sarasota. And I was up that way uh, interviewing with Ringling, but I thought, you know, while I'm in the area, maybe I can get an interview with Mill Pond Press and maybe they'll, they'll you know, do some prints of some of my work. And so I, uh, I the, the owner of the company, Bob Lewin, I still remember his name. He was about 80 years old at the time. He was gracious enough to, take, to let me come in and he took a meeting with me and he looked at my portfolio and he said, OK, uh, do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to lie to you? I was like, "Ooh!" I said, well, I want you to I want you to tell me the truth. And he goes, OK, he said, I've looked at your animal drawings. I've looked at your work. He said, if I was to take if I was to make a, a line of prints, if I was to release a line of prints that I knew would be a complete failure that I just knew nobody would want to buy, I still wouldn't use your work. And I went, whoa. He goes, but I know that you've applied to Ringling. He says, go to Ringling, learn what you can, listen to your teachers, learn everything you can, and then come back and talk to me. And I really took that to heart. I really... I heard what he said. It knocked me down a notch. And I realized, okay, I looked at my work a little bit different. And I went in and I learned everything I could. And uh, the irony is, is that through, you know, my career at Ringling, my goals changed. And I didn't want to be a wildlife, you know, print artist anymore. I wanted to be an animator. <laughs> but that advice kind of pushed me to open up, you know, it opened up other doors for me. But I'll never forget him saying... You know, your work isn't good enough for even a failure at this studio. <laughs> and, and, I, and I really appreciated his honesty. It, it really helped us, that 18-year-old kid. <laughs> so on that note, I'm going to get going. So it's been two hours. Thanks so much for hanging out with us again and, uh, and listening to me blab and blubber and draw. And it's been fun. I love doing these. And we'll be back again on Tuesday. Remember, check out my website. CreatureArtTeacher.com if you're looking for any kind of lessons, uh, drawing lessons, uh, uh, animation lessons, storyboarding, digital painting, story writing, color theory. There's all kinds of stuff on there. Um, uh, and there's going to be more coming. So check it all out. Once again, it's CreatureArtTeacher.com. And like I always say, get out there and put some beauty back in the world. Do something nice for somebody. Uh, that's gonna. That's my mantra. You're gonna hear me say it all the time. We need to do it. I think the world needs it. And uh, and if we just give a little bit more and make people happy, then the world's just gonna be a better place. So go out and do that if you can. And then go out and animate something. I hope you learned something today because that's always my goal. I want you guys to come away from these having learned something. And so thank you so much for watching. And I will see you again on Tuesday. And uh, hopefully this shot will be done, so I'll be able to play it for you. If not, I might be finishing it up. Who knows? But anyway, uh, thanks a lot. Dustin, thanks for hanging out. No and problem. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to vote. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to vote. <laughs>